All right, it is uh, 7.50, Tuesday night, not that that matters, but um, we got an ongoing campaign, uh, not so much an ongoing campaign, as a, as a one-shot that we're working on here, called the Treasure of the Lost Sands, and uh, last week, I've been meaning to get this out for a while, but I have yet to do it, um, this is one of the new maps that I made for my players, I'm going to throw this up into my sharing deal. You follow me on um, on Steam. Don't worry about these shaders; it doesn't affect anything. But this is a um, oh, what do we got here? We should probably get rid of that too, and we'll repack this. Make sure that it's not in the. Uh... Actually, I'll just leave that in there because that'll tell you if you're playing Savage Worlds or whatever. But this is a uh, a map that I ran my players through. They had to come to this junkyard and look for a for a um, a motor, an engine part for this uh, like a, a hover boat so that they can get across the sands because the sands are infested with worms. So they show up at the junkyard here, and I plopped my characters down right at the gate. If I go to, uh, let's say, saved objects. And uh, let's crack out some of my new Heroes of the Hammer minis. I'm going to drop my bag right in the middle over here. Let's do a little search through this, because this is uh, some sweet minis that I dumped. Oh, here's my mage. Close this down, close this down. Spin this guy sideways and shrink him down a little bit. We're going to do an F8 on this deal because he's probably size 3. So let's put him at, say, size 2. Something like that would be possibly a size. I want to scale him up to, let's say, this container. Because the container would be quite tall. So he's probably actually still quite a bit too big for that. Let's try one. Eh, one might be too little. Uh, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. I want them to look relatively right. These containers are usually 8 or so feet tall. So I'm guessing he's 6 feet-ish, something like that. But uh, this is the gist, man. My player showed up at the junkyard. Um, I gave him a little bit of an opportunity to rest and recover, to make sure they didn't have any fatigue, any of that kind of stuff. And then uh, while they were camping out, hanging out at the front of this junkyard here, I let them investigate. And uh, some of them popped up on these containers and had a peek around. Hung out in the shade. Relaxed a little bit. And then uh, when they started to make their way up here to uh, get a closer look at what was going on, I surprised them with my badass gigantic uh, robot that springs out of the garbage and attacks. Huge, giant trash mech hiding in the pile of love there. But this map's actually pretty cool. So you know, the way that it was built was... So I wanted to give them multiple options to defeat this monster because it should have been fairly tough. So you've got the overhead crane here with the magnets. If somebody could have scooted up the pile and made it into that thing, uh, um, the control tower there, they could have you know picked this guy up and dro dropped him in the vat of acid. Um, there's also down here... There's these little cylinders that they could have thrown. Ooh, that probably needs to be locked down so that it, people don't grab it and toss it around. Or even these canisters. You could like th throw these canisters at them or something like that and then shoot the canisters, possibly blow its arms and limbs off, doing you know X amount of damage. Uh, I believe there was a loose gate right here too. i got to repack this. Um, yeah, so there was multiple um, options for them to take out this thing. Drop it in the acid, trick it over to the acid, pick it up with the crane, any of that kind of stuff. Maybe they could have climbed up here and manipulated this machine to come out and fight it or something like that. But uh, this is her. This is the, the junkyard. Lots of places to hide behind, little nooks and crannies to take cover so that when this gigantic rust mech started opening fire with its Gatling guns or its torpedoes, uh, it could hide in various places. Now, this one in particular, for my story, this this robot was tethered to this junk pile. It was actually using this vat of acid as a chemical reaction to create the energy that it needed for its body to move around. And then inside of its chest was the heart of one of the three sisters from 50 Fathoms. And that's how my my quest or my little adventure that I'm running is going. But uh, yeah, there she blows. Nice little fast, little quick video to show you what's going on here with the junkyard. You can have this mech pick up these containers back here. 
throw them at your players for like you know instant death damage I think that this lid actually might come off if you change the state yeah yeah it's pretty neat it's a, it's a fun little map to play on and then I don't grid anything I do use my my flip me tools so you can you know space things out this way or if you want it to be a little bit easier to get across you can change the size of the grid that's my cool ass junkyard that I built a lot of different bits and pieces throw in it whatever you want little goblins little junkyard goblins you don't have to use the robot any of that shizzle let's move my robot back into here hide her back in the pile of dust get rid of my little my little player character my bag of minis yeah so this one is now now going to be available i'm going to put this up in the uh Oh, where does it go? It goes into uh, this deal right here. One World Games with, or One World Game Tables with images. You can just follow me on Steam or something like that. Look it up, or just look up that file name on Steam, and you'll see it in in and amongst the table with some other ones that I've done. And uh, yeah, there you go. We're good. Adios.